Hey you guys, it's Britt. Tonight we're here to react to a recent Nikki Philippi video. You know, it's been a little while since I checked in on her channel and some of you have asked me what's going on, like, you know, what's the deal? And I figured that we would attempt to make it through her recent video. It's almost 17 minutes. It's called A Much Needed Staycation. I'm hoping that this isn't gonna show her child a lot, if it does, I will blur his face out because I'm not trying to show her child on my channel. We are focused on Nikki and Dan here, not her child. So I'm gonna give commentary just like I usually do on reaction videos. This is not a hate piece. This is not a smear campaign. This is just a friendly reminder that Nikki and Dan are, in my personal opinion, terrible people. And we're gonna talk about it. So if you're interested, please keep watching. I'm gonna speed the video up just a little bit, not too much, just 1.25 times speed, just so we can kind of make it through. I don't want this to be an hour long reaction because I know that those can get kind of cumbersome to watch. So just as an FYI, I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. Today's video is jam-packed with a lot of exciting things, including our final harvest from the garden, Dan doing construction, demolition work, renovation work, and Dan and I actually got to do our very first getaway since having Logan, and we ate so much good food. I have so much food to share, and I brought you along for our trip because it was so beautiful. We went to a bed and breakfast and honestly had an incredible time. Also, we did a couple of fun family things. We were able to take some fall family photos, and if you saw on Instagram, then you already know Dan and I also got to take some romantic photos of just the two of us. And we made our way up to an apple farm and pumpkin picking with the fam. Also, before we hop right in, I wanted to give a shout out to my patrons. It's been really great getting to share different kinds of things over on Patreon. I've really appreciated the kindness and the community that we've been building over there. So I will see you guys in the comments over on Patreon. And with all of that being said, let's hop right in. So she is definitely you know, thanking her patrons because they are the ones who are, if, if you want to talk about an echo chamber, the people that are on her Patreon are her echo chamber. These are the people who don't care about what they did to Bowser. They don't care that she is spreading conspiracies about the pandemic. They don't care, you know, about all of the other questionable things that they have said and done. They don't care about the issues that they had with their adoptions and how they, once they figured out that they couldn't exploit the child for gains on YouTube, they decided to not adopt. So those people, and if you're one of those people, you're more than welcome on my channel as well, but just know that when an influencer gets quote unquote canceled and you know, people want them to be held accountable for making terrible, terrible decisions, especially when it involves a permanent decision like taking your dog's life when the dog's life didn't need to be taken at all. Bowser should have been rehomed. We've had that conversation a million times. When the internet at large is asking for some accountability and the influencer wants to all of a sudden come back but then put things behind a paywall where Yes, things are on YouTube, but you can't see the like to dislike ratio. You can't see uh, see or leave comments. All her comments are disabled. So on Patreon, she knows that there are some people who approve of her terrible decisions and um, misinformation and conspiracy theories that she likes to spread. That is giving a stamp of approval to a very toxic person. And I've said it before, I will say it again for you know anyone that hasn't heard me say this. When you give a stamp of approval to someone that is like Nikki or Dan or Brittany Dawn or um, you know Shane Dawson, any of these people that are outright terrible individuals, I know that some influencers aren't everyone's cup of tea and a lot of influencers do some really questionable things but when we're talking about racism, homophobic remarks, transphobic remarks, spreading dangerous conspiracy theories, killing your dog, things like this, exploiting your children, 
Those types of things, when I see others co-signing that behavior, it really just makes me question everything. It makes me question <clears throat> people's morals, their um, what they're actually made of. Like, if you're co-signing that kind of nonsense, I really question your character. And that might be an unpopular opinion, but I do believe that this all comes back to this whole idea that life is short and it does matter how we spend our social media currency online. And for me and my personal decision-making process, I like to support people that are not racist, homophobic, transphobic, hurting or killing animals. And I also don't appreciate when people are utilizing their platforms to exploit their children and or spread conspiracy theories. I don't like it, but that's just me. Let's continue. All right, so we're starting in the kitchen of our new house because I wanted you guys to get an update. Now, this part of the process has taken Dan quite a little bit of time. You guys saw that in the last video. This flooring has been so hard to get completely peeled up, but he has been working diligently as he always does to move us forward to our new home. Now we're hopping right in to day one of our staycation and we actually made our way over to a local Mexican food restaurant and ate tons of food before we headed to the hotel. So we took our staycation at a local... Weren't they vegan? Were they vegan at one point? I feel like they were. Correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all know I didn't watch Nikki's content because her content is frankly boring to me. Um, so I didn't start diving into her channel until the Bowser situation happened. But I do feel like they were vegan at one point. Correct me if I'm wrong. Historical bed and breakfast called the Roosevelt Inn. Now this place actually used to be an old schoolhouse that was built in like the early 1900s. So as you can see, the architecture and just the grounds surrounding the building are so beautiful and it's walking distance to the lake. The trees are just- If I was the owner of that bed and breakfast, I would have said, please don't tell people that you're staying at my bed and breakfast because I don't like people that, um, their dogs. Thanks. Lovely. And when we walked in, I was just immediately so excited to be there. I mean, just being able to like hang out with Dan alone. No offense, Logie, love you so much, but being able to like have conversation <laughs> was so nice. But walking into such a beautiful building made me really excited for our stay. So when we first got there, we signed up for our breakfast slot and then we made our way around the first floor of the bed and breakfast just to kind of explore and see, you know, where we'd be eating breakfast the next morning and just kind of check everything out. Now we actually had leftover food when we were getting to the hotel. So they have a guest fridge that we stuck our food in and then we made our way up to our room, which holy moly, how beautiful is our view. We stayed in a room called the bell tower because it actually used to be the bell tower. So it was a two story room. A room called the bell tower because it used to be a bell tower life changing. Oh my God. So exciting. And no, no shade to this bed and breakfast because honestly, I love a good bed and breakfast little vibe, especially if it's historic and it has, um, you know, original, um, you know, just like original pieces inside. It's, it's a whole vibe. I love that. Um, but we don't support people like Nikki and Dan here which was really cool and I will be showing you more of the room in a little bit like later in the video um but yeah I don't actually know if Dan and I have ever stayed at a bed and breakfast and it's a totally different vibe than a hotel the owners actually live on the top floor so their dogs run around the property as well and that was really fun so we came out and we decided to start playing a game of cornhole and the dog has officially taken one of the uh this is like the dog at the end the family dog do not allow these people around this sweet dog for the love of god People like Nikki and Dan do not deserve the pure love, loyal, companion, love, just endless love that a dog provides. These people, their card has been revoked. In my personal opinion, they do not deserve to be in the presence of any dog ever again. Cancel me now. Don't care.
bag and we can't get it back. So every night at five o'clock, the inn serves complimentary wine. So Dan and I had our wine and just had a ton of fun playing cornhole. The weather was so beautiful. You can kind of tell in this video, like very fall. And we just had a really great time hanging out, like I said, sans baby, and <laughs> getting a little toasty with our wine and just laughing and having fun. It was so beautiful. Oh, and they had a giant ice machine. So, you know, I was really hyped on that because I would brew some herbal tea in their kitchen and then pour it over ice in a cup that I had brought. And it was just lovely to me. That makes for like a bougie hotel stay, fresh iced tea. <laughs> so it next Call me crazy, but doesn't every hotel under the sun have an ice machine? I remember even when, even when I was little and we would go to the beach, like there would be a ice machine. I don't know if this is her trying to be quirky or what it is, but newsflash Nikki, every hotel has an ice machine. We hung out in our room and we brought our iPad and rented a really great movie called Dream Horse. Now, granted, we actually haven't finished it yet. We're like 20 minutes away from finishing it, but I can say that it was really good. And we brought a ton of snacks with us to make our own little like charcuterie situation, which was also really delicious. That's Pear's raw yogurt and raw honey, by the way. Currently, that is like my favorite snack. I'm not even kidding. And then you could see that the plate had eggs, nuts, raspberries, salami, and raw cheddar cheese. I also brought some tortilla chips, some sourdough crackers, and some local salsa. Now, obviously it's a bed and breakfast. So they served us breakfast each morning and it was bed and breakfast and they served you breakfast. No way. Yes. The pumpkin spice pancakes, the croissant. No offense, but that pancake looked disgusting. Yuck. Sandwich. Everything was so good. And then that afternoon we went out for lunch at a place called Tito's. Dan got this pasta with clams in it. And I got this barbecue chicken pizza that was so delicious. And it was actually a specialty item on their menu that day that the chef had just like whipped together. And I was very glad that I picked it because yummy. Bye Dan. Dan's getting a head start. He's taking the bags to the car. And I actually meant to film a room tour while we were here, but we were too busy having fun. So I'm doing it right before we leave. Same thing, I guess you wouldn't know the difference. Well, you see that the bed's not like really made, but I did a little bit for you guys. So we stayed in a room called the Bell Tower. You walk in, this is the main area. You've got these windows that look over to the courtyard. And over there is where we were playing cornhole and hanging out last night by the waterfall. Isn't it common courtesy that when you're checking out of a hotel, you at least like, you know, put the room together. I don't know, maybe it's just a me thing, call me crazy, but when you're checking out of a room, typically most people don't make the bed for a YouTube video. They make the bed because that's courtesy for the maids so that when the maid comes in to clean everything up, it's not an absolute disaster. This is my favorite part, I have to say. I think, I don't know, this room is really cool. So getting to have this beautiful fireplace in here, and it's been pretty cold here the last couple of nights, was really nice. And just hanging out by the fire, as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see the lake right there. And what's cool is you can get an even higher view when you head up the stairs to da -da -da, the bell tower. This is so cool. And, then and it's no offense, I have to say, we're about, almost halfway through this video. If I was just watching this and I knew nothing about Nikki and Dan and about, you know, how terrible they are, this vlog is not anything that is interesting to me. And I know that I'm just one opinion of many and that's just how it goes. But to me, this is very boring and Nikki and Dan are not the most interesting people in the world on top of it. And if Nikki's taking the lead on this vlog, she's not someone who's really inserting other topics or, you know, filling in the gaps with like small talk or anything like that. It's extremely boring to me. You really can see straight through to the lake over there. And then obviously, you have a bathroom over here. Uh huh? With a shower that gets super hot, super fast. I mean, I mean, you see the shower, but there you go. And yeah. No, I can, I can still show my eyes because one day when I'm 80, I'll look back, I'll want to know what young Nikki looked like <laughs> after staying at the historic Roosevelt. Home. There you go. Gondor. Gondor. Oh, Gondor. Oh, yeah. oh that makes way more sense. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, well. You better gong -gong. Yeah, <laughs> that's gong -gong. why I kept repeating it. Because I thought that, that was such, that's a way funnier name. Come here. Oh, no. he's got a pine cone. Pine cone? Oh. He's all bye. Wait. He knows that Dan's a bad, bad person. Dogs can tell that. And that's why he's not bringing him his pine cone. If you were not a terrible person, Dan, the dog would have brought you his pine cone and wanted to share it with you. This was really beautiful and really fun. And when old us look back on this one day, we'll remember these two beautiful days that we got to just hang out, eat, drink, be merry, play. This was such a lovely time. Our, po our first post baby okay, moon, 18 months later. I love you, young Dan. <laughs> Oh, you're supposed to say you love me too. Oh, I love you, young man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Now, before we left, I had to show you guys their beautiful water fountain and just like the backyard premises. Uh, my mom actually really wants to build a water fountain like this in her backyard. Dan says it's a crazy task, like a huge ordeal. But yeah, so this footage was partially for her, for her upcoming design work and partially for me just because it was so beautiful, so relaxing. And yeah, shout out to you, Dan. I love you. And I had such a great time at the end. Now, so many of you guys know we've been waiting for our tomatoes to ripen. And on this day, we knew it was going to frost the next day. Now, actually, we think it kind of frosted the night before, but the tomatoes were still fine and we wanted to save them. So Dan and I made our way to the back and we harvested all of our green tomatoes to ripen inside the house. These tomatoes are not like the most beautiful tomatoes on the planet, but also they're really beautiful. You know what I mean? <laughs> Nature is incredible and God's gift and creation of food growing from plants just like blows my mind. Now, these are some cucumbers that we missed when they were growing. I don't even think they're edible anymore, honestly, but they were massive and beautiful. So I thought I'd show them to you. It's so funny for her to have this kind of attitude of everything's beautiful and everything is God's creation and live and breathe and all of these great things. And typically I would be fully behind that. But when you look on the flip side of Number one, what they did to Bowser, and number two, how she has been spreading these dangerous conspiracy theories um, where, you know, technically you never know who's going to listen to your insane advice and your insane theories that you're throwing out there. They can be very dangerous. So for her to say that, but then do other things that are quite the opposite of what she's saying here is very hypocritical and it makes me tune her out completely. I already, I think I might've already failed on this project guys, but I did harvest some red raspberry leaves. And to my knowledge, the way this is supposed to go is you harvest them from new growth before they've flowered. So there was a bunch of new growth that's never gonna flower because it's getting cold out now. So I harvested a bunch of those leaves, the vibrant green new leaves to bring inside to dry, to hopefully make a tea for when I, God willing, am pregnant. But I think I kind of failed at it. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> so I mentioned that we were doing... Maria, by the way, is also a wedding photographer and she is so talented and has such an eye, not only for beauty, but really at capturing like intimate moments. We had so much fun shooting the photos of Dan and I. Yes, Dan and I have spent a lot of time on camera, but she specifically did a great job of making us feel comfortable, which is so important if you're going to like be lovey-dovey on camera and really like express your love for each other. So I just feel really grateful that Dan and I were able to really just express our love for each other and that Maria was able to capture it in such a beautiful, intimate way. And having the landscape of gorgeous North Idaho behind us just added to the whole thing in such a unique and special way. So if you're looking for a wedding photographer or like an anniversary photographer or whatever, check out my friend Maria because like I've raved this whole time, she is amazing. And here's the thing, I love the idea of like a couple photos and like that's super cute and everything, but I just cringe when it comes to them because I think between the two of them, there's so much phony, fake BS and just problematic toxicity between the both of them. That's why I cringe. It's not the fact that it's a couple taking photos. Like, that's awesome. It's because it's Nikki and Dan. I'm sure most of you guys know that. 
my whole family decided to make our way into Washington to a fall farm festival. So we are right on the border because we're in Northern Idaho of Washington. So we've gone over a couple of times and someone had told my parents that this fall festival was super fun. So that's what we made our way to do. And as you can see, it was beautiful. There was lots of tasty food and the scenery and the weather. I wonder if anyone at that festival, like even one person saw them and was like, that's Nikki and Dan, like, why are they here? I wonder if it was even one person or if, you know, maybe these are the type of people that aren't on YouTube, they're not, you know, so much on the internet, but the Nikki and Dan situation was such a big story. Like when you have, you know, mainstream news outlets covering it and it's everywhere. I do feel like a lot of people that aren't on YouTube still probably heard about what happened. It was just perfect. So I didn't film any of it because I was too busy diving in. I know the squashes here are so fun, but we had a really yummy hand dipped corn dog and really good garlic fries that were marketed as the best garlic fries in the world. That was too bold of a statement, but they were good. And my mom had a caramel apple. I didn't get a single bite. And now we're just wandering, kind of just checking out the premises, looking at the squash. We looked at the little filming everyone who has not consented to be in your vlog on YouTube on a channel that still has 1.25 million subscribers. This drives me nuts when it comes to vloggers. And I realize like vlogging is a very normal thing now. People go out, they go to events, they want to, um, you know, capture the moments, but not everyone consented to be in your vlog. This is another reason why, you know, when I'm out at a store or whatever, I'm so reluctant to vlog because you never know if that person in the back of your vlog is, um, I don't know, maybe they called out of work saying they were sick and now they're over at Target. Like, I don't know, that's a stupid example, but you literally never know what people have going on and unless it's like a really quick like half a second where you would really have to press pause in the right place in order to see the person's face that's a little bit different or if it's like really far away but i see so often they're just like vlogging themselves or their kid and you get other people in the background that are in the shot for anywhere from 10 seconds to you never know, up to a minute or more. It's annoying. Store, and I think they're going to pick like a squash or a pumpkin or something. Oh, wow, he got very happy to take that. By the way, this is kind of like the final hurrah for my dad's birthday weekend, his birthday celebration. Logan knows the happy birthday song really well, but he pretty much only knows happy birthday. I know everybody says this, but it's true. I love getting to do things with my son because he's experiencing so much for the first time or close to the first time. And so seeing his excitement and his wonder and his desire to explore is just so fun to watch and experience. And I still can't believe I grew him. Like I grew that person. So apparently all apple picking is done. Not the ones on the floor. Not the ones on the floor. And there are quite a few hanging out on the floor. So I'm kind of bummed that our first autumn out here, we missed like proper apple picking, especially since we did so much berry picking, which was amazing. So at least we have to do that. But next year, I hope that we don't forget the timing and we can also do some apple picking. Logan is in fact going for apples that have already fallen. Okay, I barely survived that. Like I said, um, you know, boring vlog, whatever. But when it comes to Nikki, I just, I can't, you know, I, I cannot look at her and her content with Dan and to think about them announcing what they did to Bowser and then coming back and like putting stuff behind a paywall. So, oh, you can pay me on my Patreon if you want to be able to leave a comment. If you're on YouTube, no comments, but I'm still going to upload the videos here so that I can collect AdSense. The whole thing just feels wrong to me. And in my personal opinion, when you screw up that bad, you can't just go away for a real short amount of time and then come back and think that uh, people are gonna be ready to welcome you back. Maybe some people were, but that's not how I operate, but that's just me and my personal decision-making skills. I will continue to cover Nikki periodically. No, it's not gonna be daily or every week. 
I don't really cover anyone every day or every week, but I did wanna share this with you guys. What do you think about her content? Are you someone who knew about the Bowser situation and you have kind of moved past it? Are you like me and you haven't moved past it yet? Um, or do you not care who Nikki is and you don't care about her content? and she's just kind of like another annoying influencer. An annoying influencer is one thing, but I also look at the other side of that where if you are utilizing your platform to exploit your child, because yes, she still is exploiting her child, but also combine that with spreading the conspiracy theories and then the whole Bowser situation, all of that, I'm just not moving past that, not right now. So. Either way, let me know what you guys think. For now, if you like the video, leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.